Hey guys, it's Chris from Steed, and in case you haven't noticed, the 2021 Raptor has dropped. So we're gonna go over all the details and compare it to the outgoing 2020 Raptor and what you can expect for 2021. So let's dive in. Outside of the obvious exterior redesign on the new Raptor, there's a ton of different changes in comparison to the outgoing second gen Raptor, including available 37 inch off-road tires, a five link rear suspension, which is gonna be awesome for that high speed stability in the rear, a third gen 3.5 liter EcoBoost for the standard Raptor. And they're talking about a Raptor R coming out next year, which will likely have the V8. So without further ado, let's dive into the exterior and talk about some of those main changes. One of my favorite parts about the new Raptor is the front end. It's super aggressive. And I know we overuse that word, but really it's aggressive. It has functional hood vents on top and on the fenders as well. The Ford designers actually modeled the front end of the new Raptor after an F-22 Raptor fighter jet. Both the heat extractors on top of the hood and the vents on either fender are all functional. Modeled after the recently released 2021 F-150, the Raptor's running lights look awesome with that signature amber look that you've always gotten with the Raptor. The three center LEDs on the top of the grille on the new Raptor a little bit more elongated and rectangular to match the overall design of the front end. Really looks good. So one thing the outgoing Raptor lacks is some fog lights. The aftermarket's picked up with this since the second gen Raptor and even the first gen Raptor came out where they had LED fog light pods from like Diode Dynamics where you could actually mount them inside those holes in the front bumper. Ford took this into their own hands, teamed up with Rigid and came out with fog lights right from the factory that look super awesome. And much like the rest of the 2021 F-150, the Raptor received all new skin on the outside, that aluminum body that's super lightweight. If you look at the rear end, you can see that satin or matte black center section in the tailgate that again stands out from the rest of those trucks that are on the road today. Some of the most notable changes are the interior redesign. Obviously when the 2021 F-150 came out, technology was a big thing in that reveal. They continued that trend by implementing a ton of different changes from the 21 F-150, and we can expect those in the Raptor as well. For example, the fold down gear shifter, which I'm really happy to see because it's not only practical, but the gear selector dial thing that we're seeing on the GT500, the Ford GT, the Fusions, and a lot of the other Ford vehicles, it's cool, don't get me wrong, but in a truck, you need to have that motion of putting the car in drive, putting it in sport, and rather than just turning a knob. The Raptor's gonna get that 12 inch digital gauge cluster that the Mustang's had since 2018. Really happy to see that in the Raptor because it really brings that technology feel up when you're sitting in the captain's chair of the truck. And similar to what we saw in the Bronco Sport, you can check out the review for that in the top right hand corner of the screen. The branding inside the Raptor, specifically in the font and a lot of the menus on the center screen and the gauge cluster all match that Raptor branding. It's pretty cool. Another little Easter egg that we pointed out in the 2021 F-150 is that they have that little American flag on either side of the dashboard when you open up the door. Now, they take that to the next level with the Raptor, they make that flag red, which really ties in well with the signature center line that you get on the Raptor steering wheel that a lot of those standard F-150 guys like to upgrade to, and the little red accents you see in the rest of the interior as well. And just like the outgoing second gen Raptor, you get those aluminum paddle shifters on either side of the steering wheel as well. So you can shift through those 10 speeds and that 10R80 automatic transmission super fast. Another thing that's continued is that you get those auxiliary switches up top in the center stack. You can hook up your off-road lighting, your winches, anything you need right there from the factory. I'm not gonna lie, I wanna give Ford's interior designers a round of applause. The, all of the touch points on the inside of the Raptor are awesome in comparison to the outgoing Raptor. We saw this a lot in the Bronco Sport. I'm excited to get my hands on the new Bronco as well, because again, all of those touch points, they have a purpose, all within reach of the driver and the passenger. Things like carbon fiber, brushed steel, different patterns, the Alcantara on the steering wheel, the suede on the seats, the leather, all of these things mixed together to really give you a luxurious feel inside the Raptor, whether you're cruising down the street or taking it off some sand dunes. Another thing that you can get with the new Raptor is Ford Pass. This has been around for a couple years. On the Raptor, it's awesome because you can get Ford Copilot 360, which includes a slew of safety features and technology, uh, new truck focus features like zone lighting, trailer theft alert, trailer light check, and available pro power on board. On top of that, Ford can actually do over the air updates to your truck as well. The Ford and Ford Performance team include terrain management system in the new Raptor. 
That includes Slippery, Tow Haul, Sport, Normal, Off-Road, Baja, and Rock Crawl modes. The drive modes adjust steering feel, transfer case behavior, stability control, active valve exhaust, active damping, throttle mapping, and transmission shift points. And obviously the digital gauge cluster changes as well. So if you've been following the Raptor since 2010, it started out with the 5.4 and then it had the 6.2 liter V8. And then obviously in 2017, the second gen Raptor switched over to the EcoBoost. With any truck owner, obviously we all love that V8 sound. And with the 2017 Raptor, they switched over to the 3.5 liter EcoBoost. It was certainly no slouch. Every drag race video you've seen on YouTube shows that second gen Raptor putting buses on the first gen. It's definitely quicker, but it doesn't have that exhaust note. Ford took notice of this. In the 2021 F-150 Raptor, you get active exhaust. They have a patent pending X-pipe design, and on top of that, a trombone loop with active valves that change with the drive modes as well and give you a deeper exhaust note. Similar to what you get on the Mustang, you have quiet, normal, sport, track for the Mustang, but Baja for the Raptor. Not to mention you get three inch exhaust from the factory as well. One other thing to point out with the interior of the Raptor is the one pedal drive. When you're rock crawling off road, there's a lot of situations where you could potentially be using both feet at the same time. Your left foot on the brake and your right foot on the accelerator kind of controlling the truck as you're going over different obstacles. Ford knows this, so they actually incorporated one pedal drive. If you push down on the accelerator pedal, it'll speed up, you know, accelerate. If you let off the accelerator pedal, it will break. It makes this maneuvering a lot easier. Like we mentioned, the new 21 Raptor does have the same engine as the outgoing second gen Raptor with some updates as well. Compression is bumped up from 10.0 to one to 10.5 to one. We don't have any horsepower numbers yet or torque numbers, but with that compression bump, you can expect to probably see some higher horsepower and torque numbers on the new Raptor as well. Not to mention, you can also get with a 36 gallon tank, 500 miles to an entire tank. First off, a hot topic with the 2021 F-150 was the Power Boost Hybrid. This incorporates a hybrid into the automatic transmission as well as the 3.5 liter EcoBoost V6, bumping torque to 570 foot-pounds. That's a ton of torque for a truck. Now, I wasn't sure if we were gonna see this in the Raptor. I thought that would have been kind of cool to incorporate the performance aspect that you can get with a hybrid and all that instant torque alongside with the EcoBoost V6 as well, but we're gonna get the regular 3.5 liter EcoBoost V6. However, don't fret. Our buddy Mike Levine at Ford did send out a tweet that said that the V8 will be coming back to the Raptor. So stay tuned. Whether that's gonna come in the form of a 5.2 liter Predator supercharged V8 from the GT500, a naturally aspirated 5.2 liter crossplane, who knows? But we're just excited to see the V8 back in the Raptor. So now we can officially put the TRX on notice. So with the 21 Raptor, we have to talk about the chassis and suspension because there are a ton of changes. Most notably of which is a five link rear suspension. Any previous Raptor owner knows that those leaf springs, I don't wanna say they're outdated, but have a rougher ride and they don't have as much control as you would have with a five link, which we're really excited about for 2021. With the new five link rear suspension in the Raptor, you're gonna get extra long trailing arms, a pan hard bar, and the longest in class 24 inch coil springs. You'll also get the new generation Fox live valve internal bypass shocks on all four corners with the state of the art electronic control technology featuring larger 3.1 inch diameter anodized aluminum shock bodies, including low friction shock fluid specifically designed to decrease the frictional losses inside the damper. The best part about the live valve technology you get with the Fox Racing Shocks is that it can read 500 times per second and make adjustments on the fly as your terrain's changing. These shocks can actually adjust as fast as the human brain can process visual information. One thing to point out is that Ford is actually doing away with the Super Cab Raptor, and personally, I'm okay with that because if I were to get a Raptor, it would definitely be a Super Crew anyways. With the new 2021 Raptor, you'll have three different 17 inch wheel options available. And in terms of tires, really excited about this. You have your standard 35 inch, which is available now. But for the 21, you have the optional 37 inch BF Goodrich all-terrain KO2 tire. Those larger 37 inch tires not only look good, but they give you more clearance and they'll allow you to clear larger obstacles. 
and really cushion that impact if you're gonna be doing anything crazy off-road. Lastly, let's talk about those ground clearances and compare them to the outgoing Gen 2 Raptor. So if you opt for the 35 inch tires, you're gonna get a ground clearance of 12 inches, approach angle of 31 degrees, a departure angle of 23.9 degrees, and a breakover angle of 22.7 degrees. If you bump it up to the 37 inch tires, your ground clearance is 13.1 inches, your approach angle is 33.1 degrees, your departure angle is 24.9 degrees, and your breakover is 24.4 degrees. Impressive to say the least. All in all, we're really excited about the 2021 Raptor. The engine changes, the suspension changes, the five link in the rear, all the new tech, the digital dash, the new 37 inch tires. These are all massive improvements over the outgoing Gen 2 Raptor. Not gonna lie, really excited about next year when they're talking about the Raptor R and the potential for that supercharged V8 out of the GT500 to be dropped in this F-150 Raptor. And when you do get your new Raptor or any of the current or past gen Raptors, you get your parts right here at Stita.com. Everything from intakes to exhaust, superchargers, all the goods right here at Stita.com. Comment below, let us know what you think about the new 2021 Raptor. Be sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell if you wanna see more cool Ford and Mustang content. And don't forget the most important thing, speed matters.